Now I have to show you the image that Luminar absolutely saved for me that no other program that I know of could have saved. But if you look at the woman, she is clearly out of focus. And then this little computation thing, she is now in focus and it smoothed out her skin. Hi guys, now I know a lot of beginner photographers are watching this channel. I see it in the comments all the time. They are overwhelmed with the notion of learning photo editing and I get it. It can be overwhelming. Learning programs like Lightroom and Photoshop, that can take a very long time. And this is where the sponsor of today's video comes in to try and help you. This is Luminar Neo. Luminar Neo, kind enough to sponsor this video. This is a software that is actually targeted at beginner photographers to take away some of that overwhelm so you can get pro level results in an intuitive program with just a few clicks. And you can actually integrate this program into Lightroom and Photoshop as a plugin as well. So I know lots of pros that are using Luminar Neo for some quick edits and some AI things that they can't do in other programs and just integrating that in to Photoshop and Lightroom. So let's just get right into it. I will take some ZVE 10 photos that I had uh, taken on a photo walk and I'll just bring them into Luminar and let you take a look at the software yourself. Now, just to show you how easy this is, I will start from scratch as if you've just downloaded the program itself. So we will boot up Luminar Neo. Now, the first thing you're going to have to do is add some photos. Obviously, you can just add it with this add photos tab and do individual photos, but I'm going to add a whole folder because what I did is after my ZVE 10 photo walk, I just took all of those photos from my SD card, dragged them on to my desktop in a file called ZVE 10 pics. So I will add that instantly. It pops up in Luminar. Now let's find a good photo to edit. I actually like this one here, this flat iron building here in Toronto. Now you can add presets if you want to add an overall look to your image before you start editing. So let's say you wanted to do uh, sunsets and you want it to look, you know, like it's a nice sunny sunset happening here and you're going to edit after that. But I'm just going to edit myself to my own taste. So I will go into the edit tab and the first thing I have to show you in the edit tab is basically the auto slider. This thing I use a lot when I want quick and dirty edits and I don't want to have to do anything. I've got a lot of photos to get out and I'm trying to do things like Instagram and whatever. I will just take this slider, put it up there and you have a pretty usable photo in most situations. You can also play with the sky to have a sky enhancer. I would use a light touch on this so that it doesn't look too HDR. But I'm actually going to turn this off right now and then just show you how I would actually edit myself if I had a little bit of time. So I will go into my edits tab and I will just get rid of what I just did. Go back to our tools here. Now, when I'm editing, the first thing I like to do is make sure my, you know, photo is not askew as I tend to do. So I go into the crop tool, check my horizon alignment, then I just apply that and then it will just tilt the photo ever so slightly if I happen to be off. Then I go into the develop tool here in Essentials. Essentials is where you're going to spend most of your time, at least where I spend most of my time. And when I'm in develop, I like to go down to optics right away and click on the auto distortion corrections and the auto chromatic aberrations and the auto defringing. So it just takes care of those things for me. Let's say you have some barrel distortion on your lens or some pin cushioning, you know, it will fix that. Some, some chromatic aberration creeping in to your photo, then uh, let Luminar take care of that for you. Then I like to go back to the light here and just uh, right now I got to get rid of these shadows here in uh, it's just covering up too much of the image. Look at that guy in the bike. You can't even see him with the shadows. But now I want to add in a little contrast and let's go up with the highlights a little bit. I'm going to make it a little more punchy with uh, the black and whites here by putting the whites up a little bit and the blacks down a little bit. I like that. And then you have your color curves here and uh, your sharpness. I do like to add a little bit of sharpness. Let's go up to 15 for sharpness and uh, some noise reduction. I don't need any noise reduction on this particular photo, but uh, this here structure, I like structure. This is like the clarity slider in uh, Lightroom and it gives it that crunchy, punchy look. And since I do a lot of, you know, cityscapes, a lot of city photography, I actually like using this. And you can see, I'll just turn it up all the way and with the boost up all the way so you can see how crunchy and raw you can make it. But uh, I'm not going to go that crazy with it, but I will turn it up a little bit to, uh, let's say 80. I do like a nice crunch and I'll boost it 
just a little tiny bit. What do you think of that? And I actually really like that. But what I don't like is this ugly old power line that is going through the top here. And this is something that is absolutely fantastic with Luminar is that uh, it has a uh, tab for getting rid of power lines. Power lines are the bane of my existence here in this city because there's power lines everywhere. So I just click remove power line. You give the program a second there and then it is going to look for the power lines through the power of AI and then erase them like that. Do you see that? Oh, that looks so much better. Oh, I like this a great deal. And that is about all I would do for this photo. I will show you this is the after. Here's the before, the after, before, after. And I think that is great. That is something I wouldn't mind showcasing right away, just that quick. Now I will actually go into Lightroom because you can use this as a plugin for Lightroom. And I will show you how you can add a bunch of other things, you know, when it comes to people and portraits. So here is the best model that I have. So fantastic model right here. And I wanna edit this though in Luminar instead of Lightroom. So I will just go to my edit tab and actually, sorry, to my photo tab where I edit in Luminar Neo and it will boot up Luminar Neo for me. It will ask me, you wanna edit a copy with the adjustments? Yes, even though I haven't made any adjustments yet in Lightroom. And uh, now it will boot up Luminar from actually Lightroom and then it will round trip me back there. So here is gorgeous Mark Bennett right here. And now I am going to edit this as a portrait. So I'm going to crop it a little bit because there's way too much, there's way too much going on right here. So I'm gonna crop it down to uh, where, yeah, that looks good to me. So this is what I'm gonna start working with as a portrait. And so you go down to the portrait tab here and uh, first we'll go with portrait bokeh. And I will uh, turn this up and you will see right now I can blur out the background. So basically it will mask me, the human being, and uh, blur out the background. See, this is the mask and now the background is blurred out. I'll just turn it off and then on off and on. Now you don't have to go that crazy with it, but it's cool, uh, you know, a bit like the iPhone where you can blur out the background digitally. So uh, I'm gonna turn that down though to about, you know, 25, make it more subtle. Now I will uh, go in on my face. Look at this. So if your face was in shadow, which happens a lot in photos, you can just lighten up the face, you see? I don't actually need to in this photo, but it is good in many situations where the person's face is in shadows. And then you can slim out someone's face if you want. I don't know how many times I would use this, but let's see what it does to me when I put this on. And does it slim me out? I'm already, oh yeah, yeah, there it is, see? Me, slim, me, slim, oh man. Just give me a complex here. Let's uh, turn that slim face off. I need to go back to the gym. I need to slim out this face, but I will definitely go to the eyes. Let me zoom in on my gorgeous peepers here so that you can see what this does to the eyes. So I can enlarge my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that I am not going to do. You can do anything with this program, but what I wanna do right now is just make the eyes pop out a little bit. So I'm going to, see, I'll whiten my eyes too much just so you can see what the slider does, but I will turn it down. I say 25, be pretty good. Eye enhancer, you can see right here. Look at what it does to my uh, iris there. It makes it nice and uh, just very futuristic. Again, that is too much, but it's cool to have that little bit of almost catch light in your eyes. Now, for those of you who have dark circles, this is great to remove the little bit of shadow under your eye here, this dark circles. Now you can also enhance the eyebrows, it basically darkens your eyebrows a little bit, nice and naturally. But uh, again, that's a bit, I'm gonna keep that a bit subtle right there. And then we click on the mouth right here. And a lot of times this works really well with people who uh, either are wearing lipstick that is faded or you want them to have more lipstick or like me, it looks like I'm super chapped here in the cold. So let's just uh, put a little bit of redness, a little bit of saturation back in my lips as if, you know, I'm a regular functioning person. Now there's teeth whitening here as well. I can't uh, show you that because I'm not showing my teeth in the moment, but uh, then you can whiten the teeth with just one slider. Very cool, cool, very cool, quick and easy. Tried to say cool and quick at the same time. 
And now uh, skin, of course, you can uh, adjust the skin. You can really soften it up. I think obviously that's too much. It looks like a Audrey Hepburn movie, but uh, you can, you know, get rid of some harshness there on your skin. So again, subtle is good right here. So about 15. And I will just show you like this is on. I will turn it off, on, off. And it just has that, it makes the eyes pop get some color back in my lips, smooth out some of the grossness on my skin, but just a few sliders. Do you see that? And then you get that portrait bokeh as well in the back. Now I did all of that in Lightroom using the Luminar plugin, but let's go back to the Luminar program, the standalone version itself. And uh, I will show you that stuff again, but uh, on a person who is arguably as pretty as me, that is not me. This is a woman who was kind enough to let me take her photo. She works at my barber, very nice person. And uh, I will go to the edit tab and I will show you some of those same things here. We will go 50% and then I will go down to the, uh, the uh, face tab and I will just brighten up her face a little bit because there's a little bit of shadows. In fact, let's go back to the develop tab and get rid of some of those shadows right there. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a lot better right here, but we will go down back to the uh, face tab and slim face. I'm not gonna do anything about that. She looks great. Now the iris flare, we, uh, yeah, let's put in a little iris flare right here. We will whiten up those eyes just a tad and uh, the eye enhancer. I like to get that little bit of sparkle from the eye enhancer. Now the dark circle removal, that actually helps a bit here because uh, there's a bit of a shadow cast with those overhead lighting. And improve eyebrows, that just kind of darkens her eyebrows a little bit. And uh, now you can see if I just go off and on, like what a difference that makes. Just a few little sliders, that looks really, really great. And uh, you know what? We can add a little bit of uh, the lip redness, give her a little more lipstick. What do you think of that? Freshly applied lipstick. And the skin, we can smooth that out a little bit and do some uh, shine removal to get rid of that harsh shine that's happening thanks to those overhead lights. And then we can also soften up that skin a bit right here. And oh my, look at that. See, look, just Nice and subtle, it's nothing crazy, but it just fixes the photo to make it so great. So we will fit that to screen. And look at that, and that is just with some adjustments to the skin. I haven't even done anything here with uh, the develop tab where I'm gonna put in a little bit of contrast, pull up the shadows a little bit, I'll put down the highlights, blacks down. Oh yeah, look at that. This is just such a nice photo in just a few clicks. So once again, this is before, after, before, after. Very nice. Now, while most of the edits I do are like this, they are subtle, they are just adjustments where I wanna take a raw photo and bring out the best of it. You can go crazy with this program and sometimes you need to. If you need to replace a sky, something like that. And I know a lot of people say replacing a sky or adding some AI image to your photo is not real photography and maybe it isn't, but sometimes that's not what you need. Somebody's asked you for something and like say you're talking to some musician, he's like, hey man, can you put like the CN Tower in front of the Milky Way? I want it for my album cover. And I'm like, yeah, it'll take me like 35 seconds. I don't tell him that. I pretend like it is a ton of work, but you can do stuff like that. If the project requires it or the client requires it, sometimes you need to do things that you can't possibly take a photo of. And so uh, let me just do that. I think I have a picture of CN Tower here somewhere. Yeah, I've got a few of them here. So let's go with uh, this one right here. I like this one. Okay, now the first thing I'm going to do is straighten that horizon because that doesn't look right. Yep, it wasn't right. There it is. So it straightened it up for me. And uh, I let's see what it looks like when I just enhance it. Oh, it's actually kind of nice. I, I like that. I'll just do that enhancement right there. And now I will go to the sky replacement because uh, the sky selection, I can get lots of different ones here, but let's say I wanted it to be a dramatic sunset here. I can click on that and then see what it does when it pops up the dramatic sunset. It's actually 
Wow, that's really nice. I, I like that. But remember, the musician asked for the Milky Way. So uh, let's put that up there. And I can uh, actually just move that all around. I, the sky orientation, the vertical position, or the horizontal position. I can do it all kinds of ways. I can flip it if need be. So, you know, just something like that. It's so crazy to be able to do these amazing edits so quickly. Again, not something you would do try to pass off as your own photography, but if somebody wanted you to do something specific, you have the power to do it. And there's so much you can do with the two. Let's just get rid of that here. We'll go to the edits and get rid of that sky one. And uh, we will just add some different light. So if you wanted the light to come from different directions, you want to motivate different parts of the image itself. Like, look at this brightness near, see how the buildings are getting dark, or we could brighten them up and have, you know, the light coming from the buildings there or the brightness far away. We could just do it this way. The depth, you can control it in many different ways. And look at this, you can do sun rays. Let's just, I'll just go crazy. I'll turn it way up so that you could see it. And I can just move that sun ray around the sun ray strength. I'll put it up overall look place the sun center so i can just put that over here in the corner and so these are things you can do again is this real photography i don't think this is particularly real photography but sometimes your project will call for it and you can do all kinds of things like the radius and the amount and the setting and the warmth oh yeah i definitely want this to be a warmer looking shot the sun rays warmth right here let's turn that right up oh yeah look at that huh very cool obviously this is way too over the top, but I am just showing you the capabilities that you have if you wanted to do something like this. So let's just get rid of all that. Now I have to show you the image that Luminar absolutely saved for me that no other program that I know of could have saved. And I was editing it in Lightroom and I realized I had totally missed focus. I was using a manual lens and I had set it up. It's this photo right here. I wanted to have this little crosswalk this pointing at someone's walking and then someone walking, looking at me coming around the corner. And that is what I got. But if you look at the woman, she is clearly out of focus. She's not very happy with me probably, but she is out of focus. She smiled later. I talked to her as soon as I took this photo. I thought I had a good one and we were both happy. Oh, we got a nice photo, but I didn't because it was all blurry. So what I'm going to do here is crazy. First of all, I am going to check the horizon. Yep totally off once again on the horizon because I was askew. So I'll fix that. And now I'm going to go into, this is one of the extensions. This program has all kinds of things. You don't have to buy them. You don't have to get these extensions, but there are extensions available. And uh, sometimes they can really save your bacon like this one right here. So uh, I will use the uh, universal adjustment to make it super sharp and high, and I will also turn on the face advancement. And then this little computation thing, very cool looking, very futuristic, that will go for a little while, and then we will see the results. Okay, and now it is done, and as you see, the sign is much more in focus, but importantly, look at the woman. She is now in focus, and it smoothed out her skin. Makes her look awfully nice, and now I have a salvageable photo. I can put this up on a reel or something like that. And this is this is what I want. I did not think that that was possible. So that is very cool. When you see AI doing things like this, like I went out in the freezing cold, I took a photo I thought was nice, but I messed it up. Luminar saved me. And that's why it's great to be familiar with all of the different programs and options you have available to you, because if it's not going to be fixed in one program, maybe you can go to another program and fix it there. And since Luminar jives with Photoshop and Lightroom, it makes it all the better for a guy like me. Now this program actually has some pretty advanced generative tools that generative AI, where you can expand your scene or swap items out for other items. And that's becoming more and more popular lately. So that is great stuff if you wanna experiment with that type of thing. But I personally use this program more for an editing program to keep my photos true to life, but just to make my workflow so much more efficient. 
So to me, this is a major strength of the Luminar Neo program is that it is efficient. It is quick. It is targeted at beginners, getting rid of some of that overwhelm that you feel when you're trying to learn photo editing. But you can also grow with Luminar Neo. You can do so much with this powerful program and you can integrate it into Lightroom and Photoshop. So as you learn those programs, you don't have to get rid of your Luminar workflow, which I think is fantastic. Now they offer a seven day free trial, no credit card needed. So you can just try it out. If you don't like it, you don't like it. Or maybe you will like it like me. And then there are subscription fees monthly, yearly, or you can just buy it as a standalone product if you don't like having those subscription fees. And uh, I will have a coupon code down below. It should be for 10% off. So thanks very much, Luminar. And I should interject that they actually sent me a special coupon for affiliates for 30% uh, off from now until February 15th. So if you're watching this before February 15th, 2024, 30% off right now. So uh, that's pretty cool. Other than that, it will be 10% off using my code. So thanks to Luminar for the codes and for sponsoring this video, letting me show off your fancy software and hopefully it will help some of you people the way it has helped me. And uh, if it doesn't float your boat, let me know down below what does float the old boat and then I will try to make a video about that. Thanks for watching this one. We'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.